I mean, that's how powerful the enemy is. He knows that you're going to... I was telling Paul, if this is all that's going to be here today, we should just continue to worship and save the message for when there's more people. Yeah. Amen? I, I dealt with three things this week that, that just blew my mind. This is how God works in my life. He always does it. And sometimes, like this week, I get caught up in them first. Usually I'm reading the Word, and it's happening right before me, and I'm just like, wow. It's like God's just speaking to me. Like the words of God is coming right off the page into my heart as these things are unraveling in front of me. But sometimes they're happening, I get all caught up, and I'm like, what? You know? And then it's later, I'm thinking about it. Well, I can't believe that. And, and all of a sudden, God's Word starts to... Just shower me with like a humbleness, you know, like don't get caught up in that. Don't be part of that, you know. How many times have you told us that? How many times? Yeah. Amen. And you know, it's it's funny because the battles I had this week were with people. Okay? And and these people were in the church. They were in the church. And while they were here seeking God with all their heart, they loved being in the church. They loved being in the church. They were here Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, and they would come on Friday nights, you know? And they just loved being here. Sunday morning they were here. They would bring family members, you know? And just so full of joy to be here. See? And the very things that they would speak to me about from their past life were things I would share with them were of the world and not of God. See? And they, they, yeah, they started recognizing it. Because what happens when you spend time with God, Alex? You start to see the world for what it is. You start to see your sin in a whole different way. Maybe it wasn't sin to you before, but now you've come close to a holy God. And you see it for what it is. You can't hide it anymore because you're in the presence of, the, of God who exposes the darkness. Amen. Amen? You know, I love that feeling now. I go before the Lord sometimes in darkness, and I don't even know it till I get there. You know, I forgot about something that I said or did, or I caught myself yesterday. I was having this great day in the Lord, and I go to visit Sandy, and all of a sudden I start talking about something I have no business talking about, and I catch myself doing it. You know what I mean? It's something I've already promised God I wasn't going to do anymore, and I catch myself doing it, and with all people, Sandy. <laughs> You know, you get it? And, it? and it's like that, right? We get, but, but God, because we choose to be in his presence, exposes those things, right? Yeah. But what happens to a lot of people is they're totally in love with the Lord. And they fall in love with the word of God. And they fall in love with the church. Why? Because we're, we're like-minded. We're growing in the same spirit. The same, you know, all this stuff's happening around us, you know? Right? And, 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 and the bad thing about being a pastor that's close to the flock, I'm going to explain that, okay, but like a little bit later. A little bit now, a little bit later. The bad thing about being a pastor that's close to the flock is that you're intimate with people. You're sharing Christ with them in a powerful way. You're hitting home runs. You're, you're, you know things are, you know, right? So who's the first person they turn on when they go back into the world? Their pastor. See, you know what happened, brother? Three times this week. And it goes with the message I want to share with you, okay? You know what happened three times this week? People that, from the past, that I got to share Christ with, that were excited about knowing Jesus. That loved everything about what they were being taught. They saw the world for what it was. The whole nine yards, right down the line. Perfect. If they would have continued in... They wouldn't be in the misery. They wouldn't be lapping up the vomit. They wouldn't be wallowing in the mud. You understand? Okay? But because they're out there doing that again, then they have to go against everything that was in here and everything God was trying to put in here and everybody that was involved in that. You get it? See? I was even compared to pastors in these huge churches. And why they're growing. And why ours isn't. And you know what I was told why ours wasn't? In a worldly point of view. Understand? Was because I spoke the truth 
of God's word directly. Well, thank you for the compliment. Thank you for the compliment. No, they wanted me to tell them what they wanted to hear. And comparing me to these big churches in these places, right? Okay, I'm going to promise you something. If that pastor in that big church is a real pastor, right? And you could pull up to the outside of the church and he'd come out and greet you and be grateful that you were there whether you were drinking or not. Right? Or you could call him and he'd come to your house. Or you could meet him and he'd take you to lunch. And he'd sit with you. You don't think he'd tell you the same thing I tell you? You think he's going to water down God's word so you can get away with something? I told the church from the beginning, from the moment I became a pastor, okay, that I, if I'm the only one standing here, God's word's going to be spoken. Period. That's it. If I'm the only one here, we're going to read his word, and it's going to be spoken. Okay? And I was in 110% agreement with these people this week that I, I ran, you know, came to visit me and, and cussed at me. In God's house, I was 100%, 110% in agreement with them, see, if I was thinking like the world. Because the world came out in all of it. And these are the very people that were just like the ones sitting here today that love the Lord and want to hear the gospel. And want their life to change. And I never even took offense to it. You want to know why? Because I was those people before. I only ever cussed at the pastor, but I said some pretty bad things to them before. See, it's where they're at. They can't be in agreement in God's house and with the word of God and with God and with God's people if they know the true truth and are choosing to live a different way. They have to come against it. They have to come directly against it. Are you going to change who you are in Christ? Are you going to change the word of God? Are you going to share things that keep people here? Hmm? I would hope that the word of God is powerful enough to do that. Amen? And it's for those that God has chosen. Those who have chosen God. We have to choose. Amen? Yes. And isn't that funny? It just blows my mind that, that, that everything I was sharing with them when they came here was the same thing I had always shared that they were in love with until they tried to until they went back into the world and tried to use they're trying to use God to justify where they're at. And they want me to be in agreement with them. I'm never going to agree. I'm never going to agree. But it's never going to happen. See? And I've seen the movie over and over. I don't know how I got caught up this week. I got angry a couple times, Granny. Yeah, I, I, and, and you know the dumb thing is, in Christ you never have to justify yourself. I told you guys that last week. When you're living in Christ, you don't have to justify yourself. Christ already justified you. Okay. Amen? Amen? See, we only justify ourselves when we're trying to fight or, or battle or there has to be sin involved. You get it? I don't have to explain myself to you anymore. I don't have to justify myself if I'm living in God, if I'm living in His will, if I'm following His word. See, that only comes from people who have chosen to walk away from the truth. Understand? Funny, right? So I knew I was a little at fault there because I started getting a little edgy, you know. Amen? Got under my skin a little bit. Excuse me? How dare they? Amen? And yet, you know what? I, when I really thought about it, it was funny to me. It wasn't funny that they were living in sin. It wasn't funny that they were justifying their sin. It wasn't funny that they really weren't, they didn't know Jesus. You know what Jesus tells people like that? And it's going to be really sad one day when it happens eternally. He doesn't just say, get away from me. I don't know you. He says, I don't even know where you're from. <clears throat> he doesn't have any idea what the world is like or what it's about or any of that. I mean, he knows it, but he's never experienced it. 
So he has no idea where you're even from. Where's this even coming from? You know the truth. Why are you justifying something that you know isn't the truth? One conversation, they even brought up somebody else's sin, and it was exactly what they were doing, and I confronted them about it, and they went through the roof. <laughs> you're saying this, and you're, it's, I, you're doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, they can't see. No, they can't see. The Bible says they have eyes, but they cannot see. Their eyes are wide open. Do you remember the apostles? You remember the apostles? Uh, uh, Peter, James, and John? They went up the hill with Jesus. And he told them, stay awake so you don't fall into temptation. They were sleeping. They were sleeping. You just went away to pray about a, a stone's throw. Come back, they're sleeping. He wakes up, what are you doing? The time is coming. You guys stay awake. You know what would have happened to them? Let me promise you something. I'm going to promise you something. Can I? You know what would have happened to them if they were sleeping when Jesus returns the second time? You know what would happen to them? Huh? They would have, have perished and went to hell. That's why Jesus said, Father, take this cup from me. Take this cup from me. And when he went back and he knew they were going to be sleeping, he said, if I don't drink this cup, it can't be taken away then your will be done and not mine. He drank the cup for them. And he gave them eternal life through his blood. Amen? And let me tell you guys something. Today people are playing the same game. They're sleeping when they know the truth. They're sleeping. There might be somebody here today sleeping. Knows the truth, hears it every week. And they might be sleeping. Time to wake up. Experience God for reals. Amen? You know what I did this week? I think it would be a great exercise for you guys. Was I closed my eyes. And I asked God to show me where I'm living in the world. Show me the things of the world in my life, Lord. You know how many people would never even think to do that? Would, would be scared to do that? Would have nothing to do with it? And I begged him to show me. I want to know, Lord... Show me. And as he began to show me, I began to accept it. I began to apologize. Yeah. And I began to ask the blood of Jesus over those things so they don't come back. And I asked him to, to share those things with me so that I could see him more clearly. Why? So that I could take more from him for my life. So that I could have more. Amen? And as I'm doing this, I have people showing up here chewing me out. Yeah, they chose to go drink and do drugs and, and live with people they're not married to again. And point out other people doing the same kind of thing. Don't get me started. Don't get me started, amen? Right, don't get me started. Right? <laughs> and, blame, and, 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 and using all the nasty things in the world to say why... God's not working in our church. Excuse me? Excuse me. Like Daisy says every week, I love it, Daisy, I really do. I really appreciate you every week. You make it known that this church belongs to Jesus Christ. You make it known that he's the Lord of this church. Amen? Amen? He's the Lord of this church. See? And who's the church? The body of Christ. We're the church. Amen. He's our Lord and Savior. We put Him first. Amen. You know what's wrong with people like that? The Bible says it. And just not like that, but churches like that. They take Christ out of the church, and that's why the lampstand's removed from the church. Yeah. Why? Because there's no light in it. They take the light of the church. They take the light of man, the light of life out of the church. They take Christ out of the church. And replace Him with nonsense. meaningless things that are going to perish as if they never existed. And everything that's eternal that, that causes us to have eternal life in Him. They just... The Bible said last Sunday morning, not this Sunday morning, last Sunday morning, the Bible said that God told His people that they thrust Him behind them. 
thrust God behind him. Why? So they could live in sin in front of him without him there. Remember, John? Bam. We're in 1 Corinthians. Now you guys got me started. Do we pray yet? Bam. Actually, before you go there, go to Job 18, or 28. Father, we just want to come to you, Lord, just asking your blessing upon this day, Father. Asking your blessing upon all that you have for us, Lord. You're just an amazing God. Do not let us see. Do not let us miss the things we should see because our eyes are on worldly things. Like in 1 John um, uh, 2.15, Paul brought it up last week, and, and uh, Lord, I love that scripture, but it says, do not love the world anymore. See, if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not in you. You can't have two masters. You'll either love the one and hate the other, or hate the one and love the other. It's just, it, there needs to be a submissiveness to, to one or the other. You can't have both. So, Father, I just ask that you could just speak to the hearts of your people. Maybe they need to do that exercise this week and just close their eyes. Quietly think of nothing else, Lord. Nothing else but you. And just ask you to reveal the world again. Thank you for doing that for me this week, Lord. Thank you for upholding your faithfulness and being the God that always serves righteousness. I love that about you, Lord. We don't even... Most Christians don't even know that our reward for seeking you is righteousness. It's the new life that J.D. was talking about today. The new life. The new man. Thank you, Jesus. Bring your word to life in Jesus' name. Amen. Job 28, 12. I have a problem with the book of Job. Job, Harry. J-O-B. Job. I have a problem with the book of Job. Every time I open it, I read to the end. I can't stand it, Granny. If I start in the first chapter, I read 42 chapters. I, it just sucks me in. I started chapter 28, I read to chapter 42. So I'm going to try to keep it in 28, okay? Just no promises. I, I love the, this, this letter. Uh, okay, 28-12. You guys there? This is a, um, a beautiful understanding of what I'm trying to talk to you guys about. See... What happens is the world, the things I dealt with this week, the people I dealt with this week, they were, um, uh, they knew just enough about God's word from spending time with us to argue. You know people like that? They know just enough to argue with you. See, and they use worldly wisdom to bring the argument. You understand? And you can do whatever you want to try to find Christ in the world. It's never going to happen. You're going to find the world in the world. You're going to find the enemy in the world. If your eyes are open to Christ, you're going to start to see the world for what it is. That's what I love about Jesus. Remember he used to put spit and put mud on people's eyes and the scales would fall and they could see? Spiritually, that's the way I feel. The closer I get to Jesus, the more I see. The more I see. The more I see, I don't want to see, but I see it. You know, There's bad news out there. Amen? The thing that gets me the most now that I'm, I'm kind of um, getting a little more mature in Christ, I used to tell people I'm a toddler now. I'm just beginning to walk pretty good. I'm not hanging on to the tables anymore, you know, to get around, pulling myself up. You know, I can kind of get up now a little bit. Um, <laughs> I forgot where I was saying with that. Yeah, here we go. Let's read it. Wisdom, amen? It says, but where can wisdom be found? Where can wisdom be found? Uh, 2812, John. Job 28, 12. Where can wisdom be found? Where does understanding dwell? Man does not comprehend its worth. So the world, anything out there, can't comprehend its worth. You know if it could comprehend the worth of, of, of true wisdom, they would have never put Jesus on the cross. Okay. You know that every one of us today probably... If we're not walking with Christ every day and have our eyes on Him, would be party to putting Him on the cross? I was thinking about it. We were singing this song, Crucified, laid behind the stone. Uh, you live to die, rejected and alone. And I was thinking about that song we're singing it on Easter, and it was part of this whole week. I started to realize that even John... Uh, a 
Apostle John and his Jesus' his mother and everybody at the feet of the cross, and he still died alone. He still died alone because they didn't have the understanding to understand what he was doing for them. And he took their sins as well as the rest of the world on him, on the cross, and died alone. See? Understand? We need to, to recognize Christ for who he is. And we need to be in Christ Jesus. He's no longer alone and neither are we because we become one with him. Amen? You get it? You can't find that in the world. If we, were, if we continue to live in the world, if he was here today, we would be party to putting him there. You get it? Actually, spiritually, we put him there in the eyes of others. Watch what it says. Man does not compa- uh, comprehend its worth. It cannot be found in the land of the living, out there in the world. The deep says, it is not in me. The sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be bought with the finest gold, nor can, it, nor can its price be weighed with silver. There's nothing worldly that can accomplish it, you guys. There's no, and that's the thing. The world, the, the man uh, who has been in the presence of the church and in the presence of the Holy Spirit working in the church and goes back into the world, tries to use worldly things, tries to justify it. You know the sad thing is when they're justifying it, they're really just standing in their vomit, like I said earlier. They lose their job because of it. They get drunk and get kicked out of their house. It's not their house because the woman they're living with is already married to somebody else. It's justification. Over and over and over again. Amen? You get it? Where does it end? Watch. You can't, and you can't, it's just, it's, there's a price to pay for that sin. It cannot be bought with the fir- with the finest gold, nor can it nor can its price be weighed with s- in silver. It cannot be bought with the gold of Oprah. I say it for me. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't do that off, huh? Yeah. I was thinking this big. Okay. With precious um, onyx or sapphires, neither neither gold nor crystal can compare with it, nor can it be had. Uh, for jewels of gold. Turn the page. If you guys are there. Coral and jasper are not worthy of mentioning. The price of wisdom is beyond rubies. The topaz and of Kush cannot be compared with it. It cannot be bought with pure gold. Where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds in the air. And you know Paul's going to say in next week's message, until now it's been hidden, but now it's revealed in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So those of you who are living in Christ have that wisdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. Actually, you receive the knowledge of the Word and from people like me sharing it and others. And and applying that knowledge to your life, you take the knowledge and you turn it into wisdom. Amen. Because it's meaningless unless you apply it. You ready? 23, yeah? Oh, no, 22. Destruction and death say only a rumor of it has reached our ears. And he's talking about those who have heard the word there that that went back into the world and that are living in destruction and death. And it's just a rumor to them now. They're using worldly wisdom to think they're okay and justify their life. God understands the way to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. Amen? For for he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, I mean, he told the ocean, stop here. You know, there's enough water in the ocean and the the planet. Sometimes you're in such a low valley of of, uh, land. Below sea level, right next to the ocean, the ocean still stays where it's at. I was telling Paul yesterday in the 70s, they said in school that if the ice cap was to melt even a, even a portion, 
It would flood the world 24 times over. It's like half gone. And the water still sits where it says, why? Because God drew a line there. Amen? That's who we're talking about. Not something you're going to dream up and think you're going to be okay with and justify like, you're, like nothing's going to happen. It doesn't change, Alex, because you changed and decided to do something else. God's not going to conform to your likeness. See? And that's what we try to do. Oh, man. I know. God, God's cool with me. Me and God got to understand me. You know what I'm saying? He wronged me when he took my, my son away, so now I drink and he's okay with it. I've heard it all. Amen. <laughs> I've heard it all. You got something you want to say about it? Yeah, you got a few. You need to close your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, reveal the world to me. Amen? Yeah. Give it to him. You ready? Watch this. Where am I? 26? 26. When he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunder. Amen? When he looked at wisdom and appraised it. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? He looked at wisdom and he appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. He made sure that everything he was and everything he did and everything he achieved was perfect. That's what that's saying. He's not going to do anything that's not righteous or right. Amen? He looked at wisdom, he confirmed it, and he tested it, made sure it was perfect before he passed it on to us in Christ. Amen? Listen to what it says. Here we go, watch. 28 is actually the only verse I wanted to read to you guys. It says, And he said to man, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and, the sh and to shun evil is understanding. It isn't going to live in evil and shunning the Lord and justifying evil and acting like it's okay because you uh, somehow made God understand you. That's not... Hello? You get it? I know you're there. I'm just picking on you. You got a problem with that? Amen. Amen. Go, go to 1 Corinthians where we're supposed to be. Well, let's get started. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1 18. 1 18. You guys there? You guys got the gist of it now, right? So I'm going to move a little faster, okay? All right. And we actually only read that part of Job. That was good. 1 Corinthians 1 18. You guys there? Okay. At first, I want to back up to 1 17. I'm sorry, like half of 17. See that little line? Do you have a little line there? Let's just read the whole verse. Okay. It says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, not with words of justification. See? Not with words that God's okay with me. Not with those words. Understand? God loves you right where you're at, brother. Don't get me wrong. God loves you right where you are, okay? But he wants to do so much with you, see? And if we're not spending time with it, we don't know what that much is. We just keep living and living and living in the world. We keep making the same mistakes, keep laughing up the same vomit, and we wonder why God isn't doing anything to fix it. You know why he's not doing anything to fix it? You know why? Because we haven't truly given it to him. I haven't truly trusted him with it. We have this worldly wisdom that comes from the way we were raised. Or, you know, that's why he says when you become an adult, put those childish things away. We think it's like rebellion and stuff. It is, but it's more the things that have been put on us. I remember as a child thinking I was going to do all kinds of great things. Didn't you? I love that commercial. The guy's running from the cops. Ah, and he's all trashed and everything. Cops push him on the ground, handcuff him, and the, and the title says, uh, nobody wanted to grow up to be a drug addict. That isn't what we set out with. Do you remember? Alex was going to be an astronaut or something, you know? You were going to be a firefighter. Homeboy was going to be a, a cop or I don't know, something that, that we used to think was a dream, you know? 
The world stole those dreams from us. We could have all those things and more. Amen? I never said I wanted to be a pastor, but, you know, God has a sense of humor sometimes. <laughs> but the rest of this verse says, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. What happened when you saw the cross and you knew what he was doing? Huh? You were empty of the things of the world, weren't you? They were exposed. That was the first time you saw that when I told you to exercise to close your eyes and ask God what, what part of you is worldly still. You remember that day? Everything worldly in me was exposed and I denied it all to find Christ. I saw the power of the cross. I saw what he did for me and I knew I didn't have to carry these things anymore. I knew he was taking them from me. They didn't exist in me anymore. Why? Because Christ saved me from them. Amen? And I laid down my life and I gave it to him. We need to stay there. You need to stay there, brother. Don't let nothing in the world move you from the position that you have in Christ. The Bible says in uh, Ephesians, no, the Ephesus Church, second chapter of Revelation, that we have fallen from a great height. We've fallen. We've forsaken our first love. We have fallen from that time. That we saw those things and we had those things in our life. And that was the most humble time you've ever lived in. And, and what did it do? It exalted you in the eyes of God. Amen? We need to live a humble life before God. Not justify our sin. See? You get it? But give our sin to Him. Let Him expose it. Let the light shine in your life. Quit with the worldly wisdom. Sorry, babe, where's my wife? She's going to get mad. I'm going to say what she told me I couldn't say. I didn't say it, babe. <laughs> we were on our way here, and we were discussing this, and we were discussing my message, and she said, you don't say that in church. I said, okay, it almost came out. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> A godly wife, amen? amen. 18. <laughs> For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, those who are living in the world. And, and the sad thing is, those who have spent time with us, right, they're acting like they're still okay, but they're perishing. They're justifying things and they're perishing. Their life is perishing. You can't choose to live in death most of the time and only speak about God when a real Christian comes around. Okay? You can't do it and then act like, oh, I'm a Christian. Because you're not a Christian. I told somebody that this week. They got very angry with me. Okay? Paul was there. Got kind of crazy. It was a good thing. I was upset about it, and Paul told me not to be because the person heard what they needed to hear. So I kept telling him, one of the things I kept telling him, I'm not going to tell you what you need to hear. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. So I kept telling him, you're not going to get what you want coming here like this. You're going to get what you're always going to get when you come here. You're going to get the truth. Because the truth is the only thing that sets you free. Amen. Amen. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen? Amen. You have to understand something too. It's not just the power to transform your life. That's amazing to me. Right? But isn't it funny how God seems to work through your life to transform the lives of others? Mm -hmm. This movie we're going to watch on the 18th, that's what it's about. This older woman who screwed up her life onto her husband's death even. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I didn't watch it yet. I don't even really know. I'm going to probably be surprised after talking to you. But I saw a commercial, you know. And she messed up. She, she wouldn't give in to God. All the way up to her husband's death. And after that, God showed her I should have gave in. And so then she gave in. And she snatched this young lady who was living just like her. And she began to share her life with her. Yeah, she, he began, she began to share her life with her. And when the young lady finally gets it, 
And she says, you saved me by coming into my life. She said, no, you saved me. Because my life wasn't what I'm sharing with you until I met you because of my past. And she told the lady, now we need to separate. We're still together. We need to separate. We need to find other women. We need to find other people. Amen? Christ is doing a great work in us. And it doesn't stay with us. See, we're supposed to share all things that he shares with us. Amen? You get the beauty of it? See, that's a godly wisdom. That's not a worldly wisdom. A worldly wisdom takes you away from God's truth. A godly uh, wisdom causes you to embrace it and want to share it with others. Amen? Let's read faster. we got five minutes, six minutes. <laughs> For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Man, I saw some frustration this week. <laughs> Total frustration. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made fools, foolish, the wisdom of the world? Amen. And can I share something with you? <coughs> this is the truth. This is where I got the idea to close my eyes. Okay? Because he's talking to the church. Look what he says right there. For since the... Oh, no, up there. Where is the philosopher of this age? Who uh, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? He's telling us, the church, that now we're seeing with his eyes, and we see the world for what it is, and doesn't it look foolish that we used to live there? Doesn't it look foolish that I used to act that way? Isn't it foolish I used to speak like that? And he's telling the church, where is the ones that, that still do this? Where are they? Because if they're here today, you need to close your eyes. You need to be quiet. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Understand? I think it's an exercise we should do at least once a week. It'll cause us to see ourselves the way we are and give us a sober judgment of who we are. So when we get to Sandy's house, we're not saying stuff that we said we weren't going to say. <laughs> and Sandy's just so polite taking it. I'm like, oh my God. I, I say I've apologized to her and Paul was there. I just say, oh my gosh, what am I doing doing this talking? Anyways. Must have came. Must have came from Tina. Got to blame it on somebody. I got to justify it. I got to justify it, you know? No. There we go. <laughs> For since the wisdom of God, I love this part, and I had to read it to myself like ten times to take the full understanding of what God was trying to share with me. It says, since the wisdom, since, for since in the wisdom of God, the world, through its wisdom, did not know him. Amen. You guys catch that? You know what it's saying? Because of who God was, and he was unwilling to change. The world didn't understand him because it lived differently than he did. And, and that's what's happening today. What's happening today? Nothing's changed. Okay? Except for those who choose to believe and be saved. Amen? Amen. Then all that stuff, as I said it earlier, it said... Uh, to some, uh, the word of God, to some are perishing. To those that are perishing, it's foolishness to them. But to us, it's the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen? Watch what it says. It says, for since the wisdom of God, for, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached. Is that right? God was uh, to save those who believe. Amen? And wasn't it really kind of foolishness when you first heard it? Come on. Right, I get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. We have this big God, okay? And I was raised Catholic. I believe there was a big God. You know what I mean? This guy who created everything, you know? But come on. Let's be real for a minute, okay? He's going to send his son, okay? And he's going to live in this world just like the rest of us. And he's going to be able to do it without sinning. 
real. That can't happen. And then, when he sees the sin of the world, he sees the sin of the lives of the people that he created, and know that, that in that life, there was nothing but destruction and death to come from it. And that they would die and perish, separated from God in a place called hell. Come on, get real, Alex. There's no place called it. Come on. That's not, that's not true. Are you crazy? He's trying to pull my leg. Come on. You know what I mean? And, 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 and he would say, oh, these people are going to perish without me. I, I'm going to give my life for them. Get real. It's not going to happen. No one's going to give their life for me. You know, that's the way most people, they just, when you, when you catch them and they've never been raised in a church and never heard anything, they just like, get real. There's a lot of convincing that goes on there, amen? But I promise you something, there's more convincing going on with people who have heard it and have walked away from it than people who have never heard it. Because okay? it is real. It is true. Amen? And we know it's true because of the life we now live in here. What Yeah, it takes time. The Bible says if you seek him and his righteousness, you shall find him. Amen? And that's the problem. Most people don't want to do that. But we need to share with them the power of doing that. Unravel it. Those are the guys, I'm telling you. Uh, Reba's uncle's like that. I just, I like clung to him when he was here. I grew up with guys like that. That their life, literally, the words they spoke, everything, the way they spoke. They weren't even reading the word, but it was the word coming out of their life. 